But let's be candid. Jackson has the fourth highest rate of HIV in the nation. We've been about as candid as you can get about HIV in the Deep South. They say one in two, you know, in, in their lifetime, one in two black men or men will become infected with HIV. From addressing the culture to the communities most affected. What do you think when people associate HIV with just gay men? I'm not gay. I have HIV. I've been positive almost 14 years. The doctors know there's room for improvement. I think that we have to, to do a better job diagnosing. But barriers get in the way of a better tomorrow for places like Mississippi. If you compared Mississippi to other states in the country, not only do we have these sort of barriers, but it's almost like we're in a time warp. Take the time warp to 2030, and the South's relationship with HIV sounds more ideal if the president's plans come to fruition. My budget will ask Democrats and Republicans to make the needed commitment to eliminate the HIV epidemic in the United States within 10 years. What are the tangible things we could do today? Um, funding is one, mm -hmm. ensuring that each state expanded Medicare or access to health care. Mm -hmm. Um, and ensure that the drug companies that have solutions lower their prices and which would give people opportunity to the drugs that would help them turn their life around and live a more sustainable life. Do you think because something like HIV impacts marginalized communities more, it receives less attention? I can't really answer that. Okay. What I can say is that um, people are comfortable having conversations about stuff they know about. Democratic State Representative John Hines highlights three basic needs, money to reach underserved communities, drug prices, and raising awareness. If President Trump is calling for a 10-year fix, he'll need the help of Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, and Azar needs advice from people who know the South, people like Dr. Ada Stewart and Justin Smith. Both of them are on the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS, a group President Trump fired in 2017 and then restaffed 15 months later. Let's just, let's start here. Is, is it possible? Do we have the tools to make it happen? Uh, could it be accomplished? I believe so, especially with PrEP and the things that we have uh, as our arsenals to be able to take care of this. PrEP, or Truvada, is 99% effective in preventing the contraction of HIV, but its price tag makes it inaccessible to most people without assistance, a fact highlighted by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who confronted the drugs manufacturer, Gilead. In Australia, PrEP is $8 a month. In the United States, it's almost $2,000 a month because we have legislated a set of incentives and we have legislated a system that allows that to happen. 10 out of every 10 people that need PrEP, nine of them cannot access it. And that is largely due to the price. In May 2019, Gilead announced a generic, cheaper version of PrEP will hit the market in September 2020. That's been a long time coming as far as activists are concerned, even though some are still skeptical it will help underserved communities. But Dr. Stewart says the price of PrEP is not the biggest piece of the puzzle. They really help us as far as me as a physician uh, to provide PrEP. They have patient assistance programs. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on insurers to make sure that they cover it. The biggest issue that I see is getting folks into facilities, having more physicians and more providers being feeling safe and, and, and feeling comfortable with providing it. So how do we get more people to more providers in rural parts of the country? I asked Justin Smith why things are the way they are. Let's talk about racial disparities in health care. So black men and women, especially in the South, they are impacted by this more. Um, there's mistrust in health care. There are stigmas. There are just culture norms that make HIV less discussed. What are you guys doing to address that? Well, one of the things that's super important for people to know is that that is not due to differences in sexual risk behavior or differences in um, drug using behavior or any of the things that we would assume would uh, create sort of elevated risk. It's really about, you know, uh, other, you know, what we call social determinants of health. Uh, when we think about uh, access to um, 
healthcare insurance. Um, we look at sort of levels of poverty. Uh, we look at racism. You know, these are all things that are kind of undergirding that higher rate that we're seeing in right. the black community. Just the level of healthcare infrastructure that exists in these spaces is not as great as you would like it to be. You know? Right. Um, and so it's no coincidence that, you know, the states that, you know, did not expand Medicaid, for example, um, that kind of have a plethora of other kind of legal regimes that um, place a lot of burden on um, black communities and uh, poor black communities in particular, that you also see higher rates of HIV. A sentiment Representative Hines agrees with. If we could expand Medicaid and take care of the working poor, I think we resolve a lot of the problems we're having in this state. For so long, Mississippi has been divided uh, by race, by gender, by economic status. Mm -hmm. And so we have to figure out how we uh, break down those barriers and put people in place where they understand working together for the common good. Um, the tide will lift all of us together if we're in the boat together and we decide to row together. And together, Mississippi hopes to see the change set forth by Washington. The national goal is to reduce HIV infections by 75 percent in the next five years and 90 percent in the next 10. For the boots on the ground, it's more than a goal. It's their lives. I just want to help, you know, my community and help people like myself see that, you know, we can dream bigger, we can strive and achieve more. The South is striving to turn fear into a force of change. I tell people, you know, I'm sure that you have fears, right? But your fears get away, you know, as you get information. Because information changes your perspective. It's okay, though, because HIV doesn't have me. I got HIV, baby. And a new perspective can give you hope. Do you have hope for the South? I have to. We've gotten this far by hope. I mean, you when you when you look at the civil rights movement and the devastation that families had to suffer through, people were beaten and died because they believed that everyone, it, it wasn't a African American rights movement, it was a mm -hmm. civil rights movement where we explored how everyone should have access to the same quality fundamental things that we all need to pursue happiness in mm -hmm. America. We're dealing with the same issue with HIV. We want everyone to have access to the quality care and treatment and education that we need in order to eradicate it. And hope is necessary, but we need a plan to get there.